loves, welcome back to my channel. I am going to do a quick reading for the collective because as I was doing my daily reading for Bahati Love Notes, my face and my crown chakra continued to tickle. So I just felt that there was a message here that should be shared with you guys or could be shared with you guys. And I'm here for that. Angels and guides from the highest lights, I thank you so much for our time here together. What message do you have for the collective? What message do you have? Especially as we're walking into the weekend and starting Monday, Pluto exiting out of the sign of Capricorn, entering into the sign of Aquarius. What energies do you have for us? Wow, High Priestess. Wow. Interesting. High Priestess, Ten of Wands, and the Ace of Wands jumped out at the same time together. The Chariot card reversed, and I'm going to clarify or get a compliment to this. We have the Devil card here, Temperance card, and Six of Swords reversed. Clarify the High Priestess for me. Okay, Eight of Wands, King of Cups, upright, or reverse, I should say. Clarify Ace of Wands, please, Spirit. Three of Coins and Five of Wands. Clarify Ten of Wands, Page of Swords. Chariot card, reverse, clarify that please. Clarify the Moon card, reversed. Okay, Queen of Cups, upright, and the Wheel of Fortune, reversed. So as I was pulling these cards, you guys, my hands are um, itching a little bit, but as I was pulling these cards, I felt this instant gravitation towards the High Priestess card. That's number one. And number two, I heard Spirit say very clearly that everyone you know is has a battle. So a battle that is that they're dealing with or that they are carrying, like a heavy burden, a heavy load that is that they're holding on their shoulders. Whether you realize it, whether you know it or not, that is the truth. The reason why I feel that Spirit is bringing this up is that there's this common ground, this commonality that I really want to... I feel really called, reminded right now to, to remind you that I, I just heard a quote that my grandfather used to say, it's like share and share alike. So he, especially with the high priestess energy card here, we have one post, two posts with the high priestess energy, it's duality. So you may be very different from your neighbor. You may very be very different from people on the road that you're driving past. You may be very different than the people that you work with. The people on the internet but ultimately everybody has their own path i'm also hearing that everybody has their own dreams so there's a lot of things that get taken into consideration things that it is that you don't that you can't see that you're not aware of i'm not entirely seeing this from the tarot as you guys know the tarot does awaken my own intuition my own internal visions this is something that i'm seeing beyond it's an an, an, an additional message that extends past the tarot so this message is not coming from the tarot, but as I'm looking at the high priestess, it's kind of reassuring me that again, um, this is something that it's, you know, in alignment with that. So anyways, spirit really wants to remind you that every single person that you cross paths with has their own story. They have their own perspective. They have their own experiences, their own opinions. I guess that w that's one of the first things that spirit wants to talk to you about right now is it, I, I think that it will help you to maybe not, maybe not put pressure. And it's interesting that I'm even saying the word pressure because that was something that came through during the daily love note, but maybe realizing that there's other opinions and perspectives other than your own, there's other paths outside of your own. And for whatever reason, maybe that will make this weekend or this moment way more tolerable or maybe spirit is asking you to take into consideration the thoughts and the path and the prayers and the wishes of other people that extend outside of yourself. I don't know why that's coming through, but that's a really strong message to take in everybody's um, wishes and desires. I just heard the word inhibit. So some people might actually, that you might be dealing with, they might be inhibited in the way that they would want to show up or, or the things that they're interested in because they have their own 
desires. I don't know why that's a message that needs to come through, but I feel like it's pretty much closed out here. Okay, now looking at the tarot, I think it's very interesting that the High Priestess was the first card to jump out. She's a stunner, by the way. This energy is stunning. We also have Ace of Wands and the Ten of Wands. I want to start with those cards. High Priestess, for those of you guys that don't know or understand the magic of the High Priestess, her magic is not something that will always be understood and explained, nor should it be explained. The High Priestess, her priority is towards the divine. Her priority is towards the energy that she experiences within her body, mind, soul, and spirit. That is not something that can always be explained. So for a lot of you guys, I'm seeing that for whatever reason, you don't need to I don't know why I'm saying, seeing like write a story of your experience or write a story of this chapter. It's a story that doesn't need to be told or heard by every single person. Actually, now I'm seeing it, she, she is holding a book. I've not, I didn't really notice that until just now. She's holding this book. Some things are off limits. Some things simply are just going to be off limits. I also want to talk about the magic of the High Priestess and how she spends most of her moments here on Earth not trying to understand the un, the what we can't understand as human beings, but learning different ways to respect it. We can learn as much as we can here on Earth, but there's some things that will surpass even our logic. It's not that we're stupid or it's not that we're not sacred enough or whatever the case is. It's just that some things are not for us to understand. We can ask questions about it, but let 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 your energy and let your time be something that it's just, or let whatever it is that you, how things manifest, how things reveal themselves, the opportunities that is that you're facing, just let the magic be magical. That's a really interesting message, but I just feel with the high priestess that some things just need to not be touched on. Some things don't need to be explained or over explained. They're just magic. It's just magic. With the 10 of wands, it's interesting because as I look at the 10 of wands, I hear the burden of oversharing or the burden of knowing too much. I don't know why that's coming through. I just know that it is. But actually, now that I'm looking at it, we have the Page of Swords, who is a very curious learner. I think a word that I would use to describe the Page of Swords, too, is almost something similar to studious, but a student who is constantly trying to learn, a, a student who is learning through observations, through asking questions. But at what point does the Page of Swords, is he asking too many questions or is he overstepping a boundary or crossing a boundary? In, in chat and in, in entering into territory that might be dangerous for him or forbidden or taboo. And I also think that that's why the devil card is here. So for some of you guys, this is another interesting message. Some of you guys may get a sense that something is in the mix here, that something is happening, that something, a conversation or some type of interesting developments are going on here, especially with the eight of wands. But with the high priestess, your intuition telling you that something is up should also be enough that you don't have to go looking for it. You just know that it will show up. You can ask certain questions. You can notice the signs. But is that enough for you? Or do you have to go digging, digging, digging to pull up the root to see where it is that it's coming from? I don't know if I necessarily see this as a negative thing. For some of you guys, it could be the spark of new new life or a new venture or a new something that's happening within your life. If you know and can sense and see the signs, is that enough for you? Or do you have to kill it with overcompensation, like spiritual overcompensation? The truth is I'm really getting the strong sense that you're moving away from with the chariot card reverse here and the moon card reverse here and the wheel of fortune reverse and the queen of cups. A lot of your events that are leading up to this moment and to where you're at right now have come through some really tricky, sticky twists and turns along the path in your life. And those things are things that feel very unlucky <clears throat> and they feel like things have gone too 
like too far too fast especially with the chariot card reverse or they're not they never took off they never took off the way that they should and that has left you feeling a, a sense of incomplete or bad luck or a bad turn of events and that might be where you are emotionally still uh, stabilized in I don't see the Queen of Cups as in the position of the present. I see the Queen of Cups energy, which is your emotional receptivity, your emotional ability to be like, oh, I'm growing, I'm being nurtured, I'm being supported. I don't see this in the present. I actually see this in the past. Is it possible that you might be present here, but your mind, your soul, your spirit, your hopes, your wishes are some are still locked in the past and how things didn't work out in the future and the things that is that you can't explain or there's no understanding to it. Sometimes there is an undercurrent that happens that's just magically happens in order to protect you, in order to bless you, or in order to stop something from growing because it's the time is not right and the time is not ready. And if it was, that same thing that would have been a blessing any other time could then have been a curse, could then have held you back. I get this really strong sense right now of the future is going to look a lot more balanced and a lot more stable if you allow it to be. That's what the high priestess is all about. She knows that she has the power, the wisdom to manifest. And that's the thing too, I wanna, the tarot is not just about what is here, it's also what is not here. And I think it's really interesting that the Magician card is one of the cards that chose not to show up. This is something that has already manifested. It's already begun to materialize. It's already begun to take form and to take life. So there doesn't really seem to be a whole lot more that you need to do other than to be really receptive and a vesicle. Is that the right word? Like a vesicle? <laughs> That's probably not the right word. A vesicle. What the hell is a vesicle? Let me know down in the comments. I don't even want to know. I don't even know. I don't know why, but I just don't want to know. Anyways, um, a ves a vessel. A ves <laughs> oh my god, a vesicle. I cannot. Okay, a vessel. <laughs> you know what? Let's just stick with it. A vesicle <laughs> for um, what is already coming. The Ace of Wands always acts as like a surge of energy that carries life and energy and fire and excitement and enthusiasm. It just surges into our life and says, voila, here we are. I do also notice how the Devil card and the Ace of Wands kind of look really similar as far as the energies around it. I think ultimately it's your ability to balance the situation, temperance card, your ability to make it work for you, your ability to balance your mind, your anxiety, your manifestation, your being able to be reci like re um, receptive, all of those things will determine if this situation turns into something that acts as a blessing or if it turns into a curse and something that you feel like it's not working, it's not moving forward, this isn't ever going to happen, I, I have to fight for this. The High Priestess is very similar to the Empress in that she, the more that she's receptive, the more that she's going to actually receive because she's open to receiving. I want to kind of caution you away from, kind of similar to the Bahati Love Note message earlier today about not forcing things into existence. And sometimes that can come from an emotional space. King of Cups reverse has a notorious reputation, is notorious in his reputation of kind of using like manipulate manipulation in order to get things going. Or I don't wanna say begging, but like emotionally begging things to happen or to occur. Let's not do that. Let's make sure that that's not what's happening here. Also, what do we need to do to turn the King of Cups upright? It's possible that the King of Cups can represent another person, an external person, but it's also very possible that the King of Cups can represent yourself, your, your higher self or your emotional well-being right now. Let's make sure that this energy is balanced. I also find it really interesting that the Six of Swords is in the near future. It's in the near future. And basically what I feel like with this is that some of you guys, because of the past, because you're emotionally um, growing in the past, which some of you guys would be like, well, how does that, what does that mean? I, recently I did a video, I had an intuitive message that came through and it was all about growth. Actually, it was this week's live, I think. It was about growth. 
And growth, sometimes we think of it in one way. We think that growth can only be in one positive direction because it's growing, it's moving, but also think about like cancer. That too grows. And sometimes when that cancer happens, it's because something that is that should be healthy and should be thriving is doing too much. And that's when a good thing turns into a bad thing. The cell wasn't bad, but how it grew was bad. So let's make sure, or the, how it grew was detrimental to the overall host, the overall body, right? So let's make sure that we are emotionally growing in the right place, in the right direction. And some of you guys might feel like because things didn't work out in the past, chariot reverse, moon card reverse, wheel of fortune reverse, you feel like because the way things unveiled themselves or from the past or your past experience was disappointment or not knowing what's going on and there being secrets or illusion or subconscious fears because that's what the moon card rules here because of those things you feel like you have to do everything in your power to move things forward in the way that's easiest and effortless but the truth is is that with the six of swords i feel like the boat that it is that you've already pushed out you're not going to have to abandon it Sometimes with the Six of Swords, you guys remember, we have to look way beyond with tarot. We don't want to stick in general generalizations. We really, really want to dive into the tarot. When the Six of Swords is upright, sometimes we think of this immediately. Oh, this is promising and let's move forward. But we're forgetting that sometimes these people are, are mentally escaping from certain things. With the Six of Swords, I actually feel like this is a blessing in the near future that says, because things were working out, I actually didn't have to leave what it is that I had already manifested. Something that is that I can sense was already going to work out and prevail. And things are already like pushing and moving themselves on. I wouldn't be surprised if you saw in the next weeks to come or days to come or even hours and minutes, confirmation and signs that something is growing in the right direction. However, having said that, don't be what is actually growing. Don't let that be your fear, your anxiety, your subconscious things that hinder you that actually end up manifesting and bringing in bad luck because that is the only demon here. That's the only bad thing that is I'm seeing here. All right, my loves, thank you so much for hanging out with me once again. I'm gonna get this video up for you guys. If I don't see you before the end of this weekend, then enjoy your weekend. Please enjoy your weekend. There's a lot of energy lately that's been showing about enjoying and, you know, um, not slowing down, but savoring, savoring, savoring life and savoring this moment because there's so many blessings to come. Um, all right, guys, I will see you in my next video. Thank you so much for hanging out with me. We're created to live a life of magic, abundance, love, and blessing, all of which will be up to you to call into your life with perfect divine timing. The Hadi Life Apothecary is the magical home of Jessica Alexandria, where you will find a wide variety of mystical items to help you to manifest your heart's truest desires, as well as tools to help you tap into your unlimited spiritual potential. Browse the online apothecary and find hand-fixed candles to magnetize your intentions towards you. You'll find thyme and star-soaked conjure oils charged to anoint your petitions, your body, and personal magical items. You'll also find the highest quality of herbs for creating your own potions and concoctions, and even reserve time and space with Jessica Alexandria herself, who will work with you to create something special and truly yours. Each item found within the apothecary are created with intention in alignment with the movement of the stars to make them even more powerful totems to bring into your own sacred space. Visit BahadiLife.com to browse the apothecary and don't forget to follow Jessica on Instagram at BahadiLife where she posts daily messages to uplift, inspire, empower, and to remind you of your magical potential along your magical journey. Blessings to each and every one of you. I'll see you there.